I want to tell you about the Xerox transfer process, and sometimes it's called xylene transfer. The main thing is that you have a Xerox, a laser print, so something that's just ordinary copy paper. And I want to get this image onto this surface. And this particular surface is a smooth Bristol paper. I just cut it down to a half sheet, but uh, you could get Bristol pads in any art store. You can get them in most places like a, a Walmart or Target if they have a crafts section. What I'm going to use to transfer this onto this is a chart pack blender marker. And you'll notice that I don't have a cap on this. And it also is kind of old looking. Um, the reason for that is my blender markers usually are only good for a few transfers before they dry out. There's some kind of alcohol inside this tip and when you have it exposed to air, it dries out very quickly. But I keep the marker because I can get acetone from any Home Depot or Ace Hardware and put it in a jar, soak this marker in it and use that to transfer. So something like this is around six bucks and these markers are um, two to three dollars a piece. So it's kind of a no-brainer that it's easier to use something that you have a massive quantity of to fill up a thing that costs half as much. The picture I'm using, uh, these are Byzantine artworks that I photographed in a museum in Macedonia. And when I edited them, I made them high contrast black and white. And uh, the reason for that, although you can transfer color, I feel like it isn't as interesting and I can't add a whole lot of mixed media elements if it already has color. So my goal is actually to transfer these and use colored pencil to uh, add an extra dimension of unreality to them. I tend to like stuff that has more handcraft involved in it. And uh, since I didn't create these paintings, I only took the photographs, I wanna make sure that I introduce something of me in the final product as well. Now, one thing I didn't do is flip this artwork. And what I mean by flip is uh, there is writing on this. When I transfer it, that writing is going to be in reverse. Because I think it's Latin script, I can't read it anyways. Uh, it's Latin or Cyrillic, not sure. But somebody who can read that would be unhappy to see it backwards. Uh, if you need to flip things around, Photoshop is usually the best way to do it. It's in the Edit menu, Transform, Flip Horizontal. Now, if you can hear birds in the background, it's because I'm doing this process outside. And the reason why I'm doing it outside is essentially because of the acetone. This is something that will mess with your brain if you don't have proper ventilation. Even if you're not using acetone and you're just using the blender marker, that is going to stink up your environment pretty quickly. I would do this outdoors if at all possible. We'll start with this guy. I'm just going to put the smallest amount of acetone in my jar, dip my marker in, smooth the side of the paper facing me. A lot of paper has a smooth side and a not so smooth side. The transfer works far better on smooth surfaces. I don't need to tape things down because I can hold them pretty steady, but if you don't think you're somebody who can hold things steady, uh, I encourage you to get some blue artist tape, tape it down. Then it's a lot of pressure. And as you can see, you can see right through the paper when you apply this. See the transfer beginning already. I am gonna transfer this entire image but there are a lot of examples I've done where I only transferred certain areas of an image and I kind of like a look that isn't 100% uh, a transferred photograph. Some areas are left out. 
And sometimes that's because the background is simply boring or unnecessary and there's only one figure I want to transfer. In other times, <clears throat> in other instances, it's because there is a detail that I just don't need. If I'm transferring somebody's face, I'll get their eyes, their nose, and their mouth. And if they have wrinkles on their face, that doesn't need to get transferred. Okay, almost done. A little extra on the face. And voila, we have our first transfer. I'm gonna do one more that's a little darker so we have a comparison. I'm gonna do this one as well because this one's a little bit darker and I'd like to have a comparison between uh, the two. If you don't know how to get a high contrast black and white copy, it's actually a setting on a copy machine. And if you go someplace like a Kinko's or a Staples, you can just ask the worker behind the counter to do it for you. Uh, I tend to have all my high contrast black and white set up in Adobe Lightroom. So when I go to the copy machine, it's already the way I want it to look. When I teach these classes, most commonly I'm asked if there's a difference between an inkjet and a laser print, a copy machine Xerox. And the copy machine Xerox laser print uh, is created through the fusing of this black dust onto the paper. So we are breaking the bonds of that black dust that was sitting right on top of the paper by virtue of using acetone. If you are using an inkjet print, um, there are inkjet transfer processes, which we'll get to eventually, but the ink is sunk into the paper generally, and the acetone will do nothing to break that bond. If you just gently brush over this like you were doing regular marker, nothing's gonna happen. Hey, we got a pretty good transfer going. I'm just gonna get a little more around his head, that halo. And there we go, two Xerox transfers. They are not as readable as the original images. You can definitely make out a lot more details of uh, what's going on in the original, but a, that's part of the point why you do a transfer. So it looks like it has age and history to it. Two, once I get my colored pencils out and I colorize this guy, you are going to be able to define the details a lot more than you can currently. There's no other uh, finishing touches though that you need to do. You don't have to spray this. The image is solid into your Bristol paper. And certainly you can try this process on a bunch of other stuff. I've seen people do it on rice paper. I've seen people do it on uh, really flat wood. And I've done it on clayboard myself. Clayboard is a mixed media panel that has a thin surface of clay that you can transfer to. The point is, whatever you try and transfer it to needs to be really smooth. It can't have a lot of teeth or uh, rough textures to it. That's just not going to transfer very well. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more creative tutorials, gear reviews and video art. Also check out our Patreon for weekly bonus videos and model photography sets.